It's a different kind of mindset. Yeah. Hello Real Tycoon Nation. So once again we are back with getting there with Real Tycoon. So this time for the first time ever I have got my show, homie on to the show who has been working on foldable home technology. So this guy, Akhilesh DSN, is working on the home, foldable home technology and I want you to hear to him. So Akhilesh, why don't you give a brief about yourself to the Real Tycoon Nation? Yeah, uh, hi guys, I'm Akhilesh. Uh, I'm from uh, fourth year uh, civil engineering department from IIT Madras. So for the last uh, year I've been working on developing a foldable house. So, so, so for the sake of audience, just give them a brief about what a foldable house is. Okay. So that they can just understand like how it started and everything. Just give a brief. Yeah. So uh, coming to how the idea basically started. Uh, mm. See, back in 2015 December, uh, something happened in our city, so okay. which moved all of us very much, and we came together to develop a solution. Mm. What happened is that our city was took over by flood. Yeah. Right. Mm. Uh, we were in the institute. Uh, we've seen how it uh, wreaked havoc in the city. Mm. Many people lost their homes. Many people lost their loved ones. So and most of them were standard on roads. They didn't have any alternative, a place to go. So that is when we started uh, building a home that could be deployed in cases of emergency. Right. Mm. We wanted to come up with a solution that was instant, and uh, uh, you know helps to rehabilitate these people. So that is how foldable house started. Okay. So like I said, it has to be instant and it has yeah. to be easily deployable. Mm. So that is why we made it foldable. Okay. So the house folds into a small box. Okay. Right. And you can carry around the box very easily. Okay. So uh, the house works on a telescopic principle. Okay. So how big is the house generally? For I mean, for the sake of so if you're saying you're, you're saying it's for the sake of emergency purpose. Yeah. So how big how big is the house and how how small can it be folded it up? To? Yeah. So uh, let's say mm. take a 400 square feet uh, cabin, okay. right? Mm. Or that big of a cabin can be folded into a box which has dimensions of five feet by five feet by four feet. Okay. So it becomes a small cube. Okay. Of these dimensions, hmm. so it can uh, a 400 square foot cabin can house up to 10 to 15 people. Okay. In terms of disasters, okay. so that's a huge implication. You can carry around uh, hmm. eight eight such pieces in a normal truck you have. Okay. So, so did you have in mind like you would be able to? I mean, you'll it. I mean, it will be able to. It will be materialized in such prop. I mean, in such form. Were you aware of that point of time when you started? Yeah, we basically started with a very vague idea of that house will be foldable that's all okay right and uh, actually the first product the proof of concept model that we developed was not the best one okay. we later researched and we came up with something even better than that mm. uh, but yeah it, it was a very difficult process actually uh, mm. imagining something and then actually building mm. it like how we imagine okay. so that was a truly a difficult process like i mean but you mean like was it i mean did, did it turn out to be the same way have you that you had in yes mind or yes okay. it, it was it was it was working the way that we imagined okay fine yeah so what are things? How, so who else is there with you along in this particular thing? Yeah. So basically, we are a team of four, four civil engineers from IIT Madras. Okay. So we have started this out as a uh, summer project. Generally, <laughs> we worked on it independently. It's not part of any of courses or anything. Okay. We just wanted to work on something. We so we did a summer project, hmm. and uh, we had help of a uh, few of our juniors in the beginning. Uh, they were only there for the proof of concept model. Okay. And later. Uh, we wanted to convert this into a startup, hmm. so we are the core team members now. We are the co-founders. Okay. Uh, recently, we have hired a, hmm. a few interns, few team members, hmm. and right now we are a team of 15. Okay, and great. Hmm. So, when did this particular thing startup came into mind? This particular thing. Yes. So, first of all, uh, we we uh, like I said, the motivation behind coming up with such an idea, hmm. right? So, we've built a model. We wanted to see if it's actually possible to do something like this. Okay. We've built a model and we've displayed it in one of the events in IIT Madras, mm. uh, C5 Open House. Okay. So the kind of response we received was uh, unprecedented. We did not expect that kind of response. Okay. Like many people were showing interest, uh, mm. uh, and uh, we even received some attention from media. Mm. So, uh, like uh, that is when we uh, uh, we fell in the eyes of Nirman, which is the pre-incubation cell mm. of IIT Madras. Okay. So they've contacted us. They've uh, mm. proposed that we turn it into a startup, like make a product out of it, basically. Okay, fine. And as you know, CIFA encourages mm. products out of projects, not mm. leaving just projects yeah. as projects. Mm. That is what, that is how the thought of startup was imparted in our minds. Okay. But uh, uh, that that was nowhere when we became a startup. That was. Yeah, we, I, we I were, really, really like wanted to talk this talk talk about this particular conversation phase. Yeah, because, yeah. From a project. Yeah, from a, a project. So because when you are in a project, no mindset. Yeah, exactly. And when you turn turn into a startup, it's going to be 
hell of a hell out of it because yeah. you want you need to take care of lot of things you need to survive sure. first of all that's the kind of first thing you need to take i mean take care of the survival part yeah so how how can you just uh, describe in the kind of shift you had in the particular process? okay okay yeah so basically like i said we were a project like we had the objective in mind we wanted to build a house that can be folded mm. that was simple mm. we worked towards it we finished it we had a deadline we're done mm. right that was pretty easy mm. and this is how we thought a startup would be as well mm. <laughs> but it's not the case mm. the first uh, wake up call we got was in one of the mentoring sessions that we went to mm. and uh, there was one <laughs> a chatter question that they asked mm. who will buy this mm. just as simple as that mm. we couldn't answer that mm. back then mm. we had no idea who's going to buy our structure mm. we just thought like we built a house it's folding that's all that's enough that mm. should be enough to sell mm. but uh, this opened up a whole new uh, mm. you know new thing for us that we had to worry about mm. who's going to buy so the problem here is that uh, we came up with a solution mm. but we don't know the problem mm. right mm. so we started searching for a problem mm. usually when you take any startup any idea this happens in the reverse, reverse order mm. right? they identify a problem they mm. come up with a solution for it mm. if it's acceptable mm. it's sold yeah. it's easy mm. your job is done but mm. here it's very difficult because we have, we came up with a solution mm. we had to search for problems mm. right we had a lot of um, mm. a confused talks discussion as to uh, we did a lot of brainstorming where it can be used how it can be used mm. uh, so we came up with uh, I, i believe we have exhausted all the possible use cases so okay. if i go to some new guy and tell that i've built a foldable house where do you think we can use it mm. i can tell you uh, like i can assure you that i'll definitely would have thought of whatever he suggested right so we have exhausted all the use cases but the problem we had done was validating them okay right those are all in our mind we thought this could be used there mm. but we didn't know if there was exactly a need for that product mm. so we had to validate it that is another uh, total new segment that we were not aware of okay. we didn't know how to do it we knew how to do a project but a startup is an entirely different thing mm. so i believe that is when uh, one of the uh, competitions that we applied helped us mm. right there were many competitions basically which uh, guided us towards this shifting phase right mm. we had to work for them we had to pitch properly so mm. we worked out the details the minor ones that is when we realized uh, how you know we should work towards achieving the clarity so who and, are your customers <laughs> I'll, i'll i'll get into that <laughs> yeah uh, so basically i'll tell you few of the use cases mm. uh, some may even sound crazy mm. so starting off i said uh, we build this keeping disaster management in mind right that is that there is a social aspect to it so we want to do it mm. but uh, commercializing it was far more important for us, for the startup to survive yeah so we had to look at more commercial cases mm. that is when we came across this interesting use case where uh, we take construction sites mm. and infrastructure projects mm. these projects happen for a longer periods of time yeah. mm. so the other uh, engineers the officers who work on the site mm. need to have a site office yeah true and mm. these site offices there is no uh, proper solution to it let's say mm. there is a construction site mm. you have your site office for 2 years yeah, what do you do after the project is done we de- demolish you demolish it or yeah. taking it from one place to another is hell lot of a problem mm. a lot of logistics and a lot of cost and a lot of yeah. labor involved mm. lot of time involved mm. so there there has to be some efficient way to do this that is when foldable house comes in okay you, you just buy our product mm. uh, use it as a site office for 2 years Uh, retracting it and taking to another site is a matter of 5, 10 to 15 minutes so it's going to be for the major real estate developers that is one case you can figure yeah, out the yeah yeah okay. whatever new project you're doing mm. you can just basically have a package of our products mm. like i said there is this is site office there is one more product which caters to the mm. needs of labor hutments mm. so when you are doing a big project you need labor laborers construction mm. workers and you you may employ roughly about 100 to 200 people mm. so you need to house them where do you do that yeah. you you build sheds you build mm. them manually again all of those factors are involved so real estate developer this is for you we just consider it yeah 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 go on go on yeah so, yeah. so uh, what if there was a product which is mm. so simple that mm. you can uh, just set up a camp in one day mm. don't worry about it mm. just build your pro- build the house uh, bring the house there set mm. up in one day okay not think about it again mm. and use it for how how much of time you want okay our structure lasts up to 15 years Great. so mm. you can keep reusing it Mm. right and when the project is done just fold it or take it in a single truck this becomes an inventory in your company okay and when you are done with using it let's mm. say I, i said 15 years that is when till when it's functional mm. if you're done with that you can sell the materials it's made up of okay. steel mm. steel has resale value mm. so at every point of time you are getting some value out of this Great. product yeah. that you have so coming to the product what were the changes that you have to made in the product while changing mm. it from project phase to the commercial commercial juice part okay Yeah so we had to do a lot of work on the product part as well not just the business part of it. Mm. So since with the project whatever we did mm. was in closed environment. Yeah. 
yeah. the space that was provided for us in the college we mm. did it there mm. so it need not be perfect people are not mm. going to live in it mm. right so it just had to be functional mm. right uh, it was so easy for us we just did it but again when you are trying to commercialize it when you are giving it to people to actually use it a lot of factors come in yeah true uh, the mm. the environment the climate uh, it has to be resistant to all those things mm. it has to be livable basically it just shouldn't be a box it has to be a livable site office mm. right so we had to make a lot of changes in terms of uh, products the thermal insulation that it provides and mm. many other things had to be changed okay. who were i mean who was on who was sitting in all these kind of factors while changing it from Prod, I mean, product to startup. Who was the who was the one physical who was uh, uh, helping you in product part also? Yeah, basically, uh, it's just the four of us. Uh, okay. And the in the core team itself, there is a small division. Mm. Three of them take care of the technical part, and I'm the one who's more more involved into the marketing activities of okay, the fine. startup. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we had some kind of technical guidance in the in the form of. Uh, professors from civil engineering department okay so uh, actually th- two of them are doing this as a btech project so mm-hmm. they had a guide who, who has been guiding us in terms of technical issues okay was there any kind of guidance from mr Prof- mr ashwin mahalingam that's what i am really, really want to know <laughs> yeah actually he was the one who suggested us to nirman mm. which is a pre incubation cell okay. he, he is an, he is a board member of nirman mm. so he has been guiding us from the beginning from the project stage till now mm. so he has uh, really shown us the path on how to proceed further okay. mm. right uh, yeah he, he has been a great help uh, in this particular transition that i'm talking about mm. from a project to a startup. startup yeah so one more thing which i wanted which i was really concerned about was the kind of business mindset okay. so if so if at all you take both of us we are we are both first generation entrepreneurs for this from our side from our family okay. yeah so we didn't have anyone like from within the family to guide us about business true stuff yeah so how challenging was coming to that part because we are not you because, okay. because we both of us were not subjected to the quite that kind of thing because i yeah. i had to find my own guidance that's a different my thing but person. coming to what how was that particular thing okay uh, so yeah like you said uh, our parents are not entrepreneurs there yeah. is no business in their family yeah. it was very difficult adopting to the mindset but uh, i think many things uh, like influenced it there was a, the, the environment in the college mm. the kind of support that we can get here mm. uh, the activities that happen uh, inside iitm every now and then mm. right, the, the the events that happen mm. and it's basically out of self interest mm. right and i believe most students should be encouraged to do this mm. uh, i believe in the first generation entrepreneurs like us uh, truly new innovative ideas would come up yeah. mm. uh, students should not be restricted to you know just following the same stipulated path that is there for everyone you know just go get an intern get a job mm. students should be allowed to explore Mm. this is a time we can take a risk mm. right so i believe m- many more students have to be encouraged to do chase their dreams you know try out their ideas so did anyone act as a mentor for you during that i mean what to teach you about businesses i mean times whenever it was needed for example uh, when are you ha- when are you going to deal with a suppose suppose if at all you go and deal with a real estate developer okay regarding this particular world bull world bull world bull house at all you are going to deal with a builder like there going to be a lot of negotiations that kind of thing. so yeah yeah how was it? so did you find anyone who could mentor you on that part? Uh, not really i i don't have a very uh, specific person as a mentor mm. but i have found mentors in many people i have met along with the way and uh, i would say the mistakes you commit are the biggest guidance to you mm. right once you make a mistake you'll realize it then you'll not commit it again Th- that has to be there you need to have that kind of mindset so yeah like i said i did not have anyone in particular but uh, I have attended one of the startups, summer startup schools that was conducted by IB Hubs. Mm. It's an organization that span India. Mm. So that was really helpful for me. That okay. really uh, helped me gain a entrepreneurial mindset. Mm. So they've taught us different aspects of a startup, mm. what all needs to be done in an organization, mm. and uh, uh, basically this knowledge that came from different sources is what helped me mold myself into uh, a person who okay. leads a startup. So what is your vision for towards the startup and towards yeah. other? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right now, we uh, we have some pilot projects in our hand. Mm. So the short term goal is to finish them, Im- implement it on site, okay. and actually make it work. Mm. And I believe if we are successful in this uh, attempt, uh, we'll get a lot of orders from different construction companies and real estate builders. Okay. So we believe uh, a lot of responsibility is on us mm. to make sure that this idea is executed properly. Mm. and i i've received great response from many people saying that the idea is very good yeah, but the execution the, the everything everything after this depends on us so we as individuals have to be uh, very competent to do it so and the vision uh, of our, our vision for this uh, startup would be 
to cater to uh, these type of temporary needs the temp uh, wherever a temporary structure is needed mm. we would like fold blocks to be there mm. to capture all this market and also going forward we also want to uh, change the way structures are constructed basically mm. if you take conventional construction methodologies there are a lot of disadvantages a lot of optimizations that can be done so that's going to be a long term that go that's going to be the yeah. long term vision right mm. uh, to develop a new type of construction mm. within pre prefabricated construction itself okay. prefabricated construction is a method that mm. came uh, in order to eliminate the conventional mm. shortcomings okay. we want to develop something new in that mm. uh, particular domain as well so thank you so much akil so it was so a pleasure so so where can people reach you on there uh, you can find me on facebook uh, you can put up my contact details yeah. probably along with so the video so akil dsn is his facebook id so you can search and we we'll have it down it's on one yeah, yeah. Thanks for watching the video guys. Uh do follow the page. This guy puts up a lot of interesting stuff. And if you do feel that our product is relevant to you, please get back to us. Thank you. And real estate developers, you need to do it.